in this video, we'll see the importance of exception implicit object in JSP. So this is also called as exception handling in JSP. So what we'll do is, in this body tag, let me use a form tag. So in this form tag, I will ask user to enter two numbers. So we'll say form uh, action, we'll say calculate. So we'll create a JSP called as calc.jsp. Okay, so we'll say calc.jsp. And the method doesn't matter, we'll go for get. So this will take two parameters. So we'll say type equal to text. So we need, we need two text fields here. And we'll say name of the first is num1 and the name of the second one will be num2. So just we can just simply copy paste it. So and the second part will be num2. So we have num1 and num2 as a two as two input text field. And we require a button. So I also need a break between. So there's a br tag here and a br tag here also. Okay, and then this will create a button here. So we'll say input uh, type submit is because I want to work for the form tag. And then uh, we'll say the value which should show is let's say divide. So I'm going for a, a operation here called as divide. So if you enter a value like 15 and 3, it should print the value as 5. Now since we are calling this as calc.jsp, we'll say a new web page. So we'll say new JSP page and we'll name it as calc.jsp, not to mention the extension. We can simply click on finish. I don't need all this extra comments here. So I will remove this comments. I, re I will remove this head section also. I, know the I don't need that. And here, what it should do is it should take those two parameters. So we'll say we, we require two variables. So all this coding will be done in body. Okay. So body open, body close. And inside this body, what I need, I need a JSP tags. So we'll say <coughs> scriptlet. And in this scriptlet, what we'll do is we'll create two variables. One will be num1. And the value for this num1 will come from, uh, in, from the user. So we'll say integer passing since the value will be coming in string format. We'll say request dot get parameter. And in this, we'll specify the name of the uh, uh, field there, which is num1. We can just simply copy paste and we'll say this is num2. And here also num2. So we got these two, val two values here. Once you got these two values, what we can do is we can add them. Uh, we need to subtract it, right? So we'll say we we'll, we'll create one more variable, which is result equal to. It will be num1 divide by num2 okay so we got uh, <coughs> we got an operation here which is num1 divided by num2 and once you got the operation we can also use out dot print to print result or we can use expression tag here so if you're not familiar with expression tag in expression tag if you mention anything it will directly go to the out dot print ln of your out dot print of your sublet so we'll say result here so this is one way of printing. So the either you can print here out dot print ln in bracket result, or you can use expression with by printing result here. Simple. So we've got two pages. One is index.html in which I have uh, my a view in which user will enter two values and click on a button, and then it will call calc.jsp in which I'm applying the operation of division. So if I run this code now, uh, so it will open in my web browser, so it shows me two text field here. Uh, ignore the type of you're getting, so we'll say five, and let's say next value is, uh, we'll divide 15 and five, so if I click on divide, the answer will be three, right? So we're getting the right output. But let's say if I enter, by mistake, if I enter zero, and if I say divide, you can see it gives me a page with weird error. You know, imagine your user getting this type of errors. No user will visit your website once again if, you, if, if they get this type of errors. You know, if there is one problem, the, the problem is you cannot divide a number by zero, right? So you can specify the user that you cannot divide by zero. So in order to print that, you need to handle this, this exception. So to handle the exception, so if you're familiar with try catch block of Go Java, in order to do this here, what we need is we need a, we need a directive page here. So we'll say directive. In order to use directive tag, we need to use address symbol. Which directive we need? We need page directive. 
in page directory there is an option of error page. So in case what happened? This directory I'm a work oh sorry I'm in uh, HTML folder. Okay. So we need to do this in uh, calc. So in calc we all, I already have a directive here. So after this page encoding, we can we can also we, we can create one more page directive here. But since I have already, so I can use that with the error page. In if you if you get any error, just call error.jsp. <coughs> Sorry. So I can simply call. So in order, if if you get any exception in this file, it will call this error.jsp page. Okay. But unfortunately, I don't have any page here. So we can simply say. Uh, we'll say new, we'll create a JSP page and we'll name that JSP page as error.jsp and we'll click on finish. Okay, so once you got the JSP page, again, I don't want all these comments. So here, uh, in this body section, what I can simply print is, in h1 tag itself, we'll print error. Okay, and we'll say, uh, you cannot divide a number by zero, right? So this is this is what you have an error. So if I run this now, so let me run this. So I have, I have tried to handle the exception. So it is getting open in my IE. It asking for two values. We'll say fifteen and two just for the experiment, and the output should be seven. Yeah. And if I type here zero, so it will go to calc.jsp, and calc.jsp will find an error, and it will call error.jsp. So this, this output you are getting from error.jsp, right? So but we have tried to handle the exception here. But let's say I want to print also the error, the error generated by your JSP. In order to print the error, what we need is we need a JSP, we need an exception uh, object here. So what I can simply do is after this, we'll use uh, uh, expression tag, this one, We'll finish it here. And in this expression tag, I can use an inbuilt object called an exception. So this is the exception object which is generated once you once you got the error. So anytime you get error on this page, it will generate the exception object, which is this object. So this is responsible to print the error. Uh, let me just change my browser. I'm fed up with this. So let me use Firefox. And let me go back to HTML. If I run this. So after running, it's giving me the same uh, same thing. If I say 15 and 5, uh, the output is 3 just for the checking. And if I say 0 now, and if I click on divide, oh, oh again, it's giving me an error. It says unable to compile the class file for JSP. The problem is, whenever you use this object called as exception, so you can see exception cannot be resolved to a variable. It's because by default, you are not allowed to use this object called exception. Because in every class, there will be an exception object, but you are not allowed. In order to use that object, we need to specify one more thing called as, is this error page? So we need to specify that this page is error page. So we'll say, by default, is false, we'll make it true. If you make it true, that means you can use this object now. Simple. So in order to use exception, we need to do this part. We'll run this code again. And this time, if I say 15, 15 and 0, if I click on divide, now you can see uh, error. You cannot divide number by 0, so this is the error which is printed by you, and this is the error printed by your Tomcat. Okay, so this is divide by 0 error. So this is how we need to handle the exception. This is how we need to use the implicit object which is exception. So in total, we have seen, in the last video, we have seen the importance of session object, application object, uh, and then we have this exception object. So these are all your implicit objects in JSP. So and that's it from this video. So and do subscribe for the further videos. And thank you so much for watching.